Welcome back to the uh, Portageville High School Gymnasium. We're here for the last game of the uh, third day of the tournament. This will be the semifinal game between the third seed of Kennedy Indians and the second seed of Portageville Bulldogs to determine who gets into the championship game. The championship game is just, just the first uh, team in the game was just established in a game that by far the best team of the tournament between Bernie and Dexter. Bernie defeated Dexter 57-53. Uh, I just hope we have anything close to that. My name is Terry McVeigh. Sitting with me is Lloyd Rice, a uh, longtime high school college official, director of officials for the tournament. Lloyd, I know the people are probably still <laughs> watching watch that last mm -hmm. game, and, and that you're not going to see many better games than what we just that, saw. That's as good as it gets at this tournament at the high school level. That's that's uh, why people come back year after year. Anytime Dexter and Bernie semifinal matchup at the Christmas tournament, good good things happen, and it just did. Uh, uh, the great effort by both teams. Both teams played their hearts out and um, just hope they got enough legs to get back in here tomorrow night and follow up on it. Well, it, you know, well, there have been other close games. It's like last night's game between Portageville and Haytai, which went into overtime. But this, the game we just saw was – a close game and a well-played game. Now, this game's going to be, we're looking for a really good game here. Portageville and uh, Kennett have met once before. This year, Kennett won by 22, at, but that was at Kennett. Uh, what do you look for in between these two teams? Well, uh, uh, probably the same thing, everyone from Kennett, and I know Coach Vaughn and them, what's Coach Bidewell going to do? <laughs> Who's he got? What are they going to do tonight that's, uh, that's different than a couple weeks ago? Um, Portageville always brings their A game at you, and um, Kennett's, Kennett's just been really good. I've We've had the previous two games with him in this tournament. Been really impressed with Kennett. A uh, lot of hands, very active, um, super defensive team this year. Uh, the best defensive team in the tournament as far as creating havoc and uh, making you adapt to their style. Isaac Ray starting for uh, Portageville, a 5'11 junior. Fred Treadwell, the most experienced guy that Portageville has, and who carried, who really put him on his back last night, scored 15 points in the fourth quarter in overtime to lead the team to a two point victory. Including what? A, what, what including, a great uh, ending last yeah, night. Including I mean, that, that one lot of those of dash. He dashed to the bucket with uh, five seconds left and drove the length of the court and put up a put up a shot that bounced around and fell in. Cameron Wallace, five nine junior, started for Kennett. Fred Garman, five ten junior. Randrick Crothers, six two junior. Dwight Usery had a big game last night for Kennett, and Adam Grantham. A starter. He hasn't been starting so far for Kenneth, but he's starting tonight trying to give Kenneth a little bit more size. I think we've got to look for in this game. What we've seen with Kenneth, they've had a little bit of trouble closing out games. Uh, yesterday they got up on Bloomfield, let Bloomfield back in the game, and uh, uh, they turned a, uh, what could have been a 20 point game in, into a five point victory. Portageville. Their problem so far this season, is, and it's shown through this tournament, they're having trouble taking care of the ball, which kind of plays in the Kennett's hands it because does. Kennett does put that much pressure and, have, and they play so they're a good hands defense. I know everyone says you play defense with your feet, which is what you actually well, do, but Kennett's hands are so active. They play havoc with anybody. You can do what they do when you're that quick with it, and uh, they are. They're very handsy uh, without fouling. They just they won't be in foul trouble. I guarantee you these guards won't let that be an issue. And they will play. They'll play ten people. Coach Vaughn substitutes freely. Lob underneath to Young. Jake Young can't get it to go. Goes out of bounds off of Kennett. Jack Young has been a pleasant surprise for Portageville this year. Of course, their whole team, they, they pretty well had to restock their whole team. They were state champions last year. Spread Treadwell with the drive. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Booker. He can't get it to go. Ray puts it back up and in. 
three offensive rebounds that could loom large in a game like this because yeah. um, they're not the best shooting team in the tournament, and there's going to be a lot of offensive rebounds to be had. And one of Kenneth's weaknesses is their size and yep. their ability to rebound. Brothers with the three, can't get it to go. Jake Young with the rebound. Saw that last night in the Bloomfield game. That Bloomfield pretty well dominated the boards against Kennett. Treadwell is intercepted by Garman. It's hard to make a diagonal pass against this team. Fred Garman uses his quickness and takes it all the way to the hole. He's been tremendous all week. I tell you, it seems like I've called his name more than anyone's, and uh, I just think he's been the outstanding five second all call, week. The defensive Kenneth had both uh, Grantham and uh, Crothers guarding the inbound man. Uh, Treadwell couldn't get, he could, could get the ball to him. Walsh, good shooter out on the wing. They're driving against Jake Young. Garmin free throw lane. Back out to Crothers. Poked away. Crothers in the lane. Circus shot and puts it in. Randy Crothers, a fine offensive move. And I think Crothers is a very, very unselfish player. Uh, player and I think he needs to assert himself a little bit more offensively. This would be the night to uh, to this bring that game, yes. Fernando Menace that ties it up. Now, unless it's a misprint, Terry, Portageville does not have a senior on the floor or even on the roster. They That's don't have a, one on the roster. <laughs> this is pretty good experience. Uh, for this bunch, and I know they've even got a lot of young Welcome. subs on the bench. Yeah, they. Uh, when you talk about it, you, you never know what Bible's going to bring. Of course, we're talking about Coach Jim Bible, the longtime coach of uh, Portageville, who has five state championships. He comes in last night, has uh, Kenneth played Portageville two weeks ago. He has three guys playing yep. last night, uh, a lot of time. Uh, you know, had a lot of minutes. The three guys didn't even play in that game two yep. weeks ago against Kennett. They're on the JV team. Ray with the rebound. Can't get it to go. Cameron Wallace. And Kennett's off and running. Pulls up to S3. Garmin over to Crothers. Crothers is being guarded by Treadwell. Ray Grantham and there's Treadwell. Locking it out of bounds. Treadwell's the only uh, player for Portageville that saw any appreciable time last year on their state championship team. They were a senior-laden team. And he saw a bunch of it. Fred's he did a good, see a bunch. A good returner. And he's the guy that's, you know, but it gets the crunch time. If Jay Shaver's in the game, puts up a puts up a fadeaway, can't go. And he's the guy when it comes to crunch time, he puts the team on his back. Last night he scored, I think, 15 points in the fourth quarter in the overtime. Almost five seconds, good defense by us three. That will go. Brothers with the rebound, he's going to take it. He's going to run it down the middle. Floats, can't get it to go. Booker with the rebound. Again, Treadwell will, will bring it up. Guarded by Dwight Usry. Getting it pressures all over the court. Jay Shavers picks Menace pocket. He takes it in. Shavers, Menace blocks it. Get it, gets it back. Over to Wallace. He can make that shot, and he does. Good, good look. Wallace set himself, was sitting there waiting on it. Very, very nice play. Brothers got the uh, got the penetration, was able to set up the th the, uh, the three point player. Wallace with the foul in the background, his first foul of the game with 3:49 left in the first quarter. Score is Kennett seven, Portageville four. Got some substitutions coming in. Andy Lack for Kennett. Kevin Walker, 5'10 sophomore for Portageville. Again, Kennett will use a lot of players and. And that's going to, uh, Jack Wall's also in the game for Kennett. And that could tell in the fourth quarter because Portageville isn't as deep. And 
And as intense as Kenneth's defense is, that can wear down on a team. Good move by Good Ray. Ball handling. That guy can handle the ball. I've been really impressed with Isaac Ray this year. Black pulls it back to Shavers. Tevin Walker almost picked him. Garmin for three. He won't go. Foul on Lack on rebound foul over the back. His first team second. Again, quick hand, Terry. Nope. I mean, even the little things like that, they they tend to mount up and uh, wear a team down. Pedals in the corner, gets by Walls. Walls gets his hands on him. It's yep. going to be another foul on Kennett. First on Jack Walls, third team foul on Kennett. We played almost four or five minutes, and only has been 11 points scored. But there's Treadwell from the corner. Okay. First scores his first three, makes it a 7-7 game. Garmin to the to the lane. He'll draw the foul on 22 Walker. Yeah, Dominique Walker, a freshman, and and this is a freshman. You'll get to see him. You'll you'll be seeing him for a long time. But he's a freshman that uh, whenever he learns how to play basketball, he's going to be great. Drop in with our sponsors uh, from Portageville that are helping you bring this game tonight. Butler Drugstore, Ellington Insurance, and the A-plus Family Clinic. Butler Drugstore at 222 East Main Street in Portageville. The pharmacy, gifts, and jewelry. This is both. Walls rebound. He can't get it to go. Off of Walker, off of Garmin. Ball went ball. off of Garmin's head off the rebound. Another the deflection, but Treadwell oh. gets it and puts Portageville ahead. Well, Treadwell's come to play basketball tonight. He's... Uh, Jimmy Gooden with the rebound underneath. And again, Kenneth's weakness on the board is going is going to be hurting them. Jimmy Gooden will shoot two, which will always also Terry um, lead to fouls because it's it's that second and and even that third offensive rebound it's it's hard not to reach in and grab someone foul someone foul them on the shot um yeah you're uh, going to be when somebody gets an offensive rebound right. on you're going to be out of position and you're going to make and it's going to create a foul good and hits both ties the game up with two minutes and 30 seconds left in the first quarter minutes with the ball out front being guarded by Carruthers. Tries to drive the lane. Does keep hold of it. A little spin all move. Way that <laughs> nice little spin move that by Menace. was a great Hadn't move. Hadn't seen that move from him this Not exactly so far. sure. That's what Coach Bidewell had in mind. but Fred Garman gets two. Tie the game back up at 11. Foul on Usri against Treadwell. That'll be Usri's first team fourth Jake Young back in so far Portageville has handled that pressure by they've handled creating it very offensive well offensive pressure you might say they're they're kind of pushing it right past uh, that first line of defense that Kennedy is so good at out high nice move by Ray gets by everybody Another and again Portageville rebound. gets the offensive rebound and if Kennedy cannot if they can't hit the boards we're going to have some problems. Ray out to Wallace. He can hit it. He does. Two. He's Cameron Wallace with his second three of the game. Mirror image of that first one. Different side. Yep. Menace 
There's a flop by Esri. He's going to shoot two. Usry tried to draw the charge, but when the guy doesn't touch you, that it's hard to get a charge. <laughs> it's hard to draw a charge when he scoots around you. Yeah. I don't think when the wind blows you over, you're going to get the charge. Hey, one of our sponsors is Ellington Insurance, 200 East Main Street, Portageville. See Ellington Insurance for all your insurance needs. Appreciate those sponsors from Portageville stepping up for the uh, – the tournament here and the team. Portageville has always supported their team well. Looks like a rebound foul is going to be on Jake Young. His first. It's that's the team's third foul. And that was caused by us for having just having good position. Even when you're smaller, if you, have, if you get good position, you're either going to get the rebound or going to come over your back. Crothers for three, can't get it to go. And when you're smaller and the big guy has a <laughs> good position on you, and you're going to go over their back too. I, That's what Usry did then. Jake had initial uh, good rebound, but when he came down, uh, the guy was underneath him, kind of invaded his spot. It's Usry second, team six. Treadwell being guarded by Walls now. Over Treadwell's Booker. doing a quite a bit of the ball handling uh, reminiscent of John Smith and Puxico. Maybe uh, yes. it'll be a long night if he has to handle the ball and do a bit of the score. Wallace load. from the corner can't get it to go. Jack Walls with the rebound won't go. Rebound to Booker. Outlet to Treadwell. He pushes it down the court. Now he pulls back. He's being handled by double team. And Portageville sets wow. the offense in the in the Booker, who was all alone. Rondris Booker for two. Gives Portageville the lead with 20 seconds to go, 15 to 14. Wallace out front with three. Walls looks at it, won't take it. 10 seconds in the, on the clock. Grantham for three. I don't think that's what Coach Vaughn wanted. Grantham's not an outside shooter. Last second shot by Treadwell oh. almost goes. Good look at it. Very good look at it. Okay, that's the conclusion of the first quarter with uh, Portageville on top of Kent at 15-14. We'll, we'll be back in a minute after these words. Hey, I'm Kurt Hillis at Lincoln Lacey Chevrolet. We've got a full line of GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick products. I'll pass it over to my Ford man, Charlie Thacker. GM's not your thing? Come check us out here at the Ford Dodge Jeep store. Check out my man Blake on the internet, LincolnLacy.com. If you don't have time to come down to Malden, check us out on cars.com or autotrader.com. And if you need financing, I'm going to pass it to my man Robert Sandage. And our ultimate goal here at Lincoln Lacy, no matter your situation, is to pass the savings on to you. There's some exciting news in the workplace. Cable is getting down to business. That's right. New Wave Communications expertise and state-of-the-art technologies for internet and phone are the perfect solution for your business. Our solutions are flexible, our service reliable, and our prices are just the sort of bottom line advantage your business is looking for. Call New Wave Communications today at 866-460-WAVE. Here we are back for the uh, start of the second quarter of the game between the semifinal game between the Portageville Bulldogs and the Kennedy Indians. Hey, Terry, Port that's a great first quarter by Portageville. They uh, handled the pressure, all the, all the pitfalls um, got through them. Portageville had a nice quarter. Fred Garman taking a, take the good shot. Uh, Portageville did what they needed to do. They took care of the ball pretty well. Just as I say, that's Jay Shavers. Gets the foul or gets the steal, gets it underneath the good, and he draws the foul. They took care of the ball and they rebounded well, which is their, you know, rebound is going to be their strength against Kennett. That's foul on Booker, his first. Garmin with that jumper on the preceding possession, he's been money all week up here. He has um, probably even been their best player in this tournament as far as productivity. He's He's been solid all week. 
Yeah, he's he's asserted himself uh, more than any other tenant player, and he's he's very active. He's uh, he's quick and he can he's explosive. Gooden hits one of two. Tennis leads now 17 to 15. And he lack with the corner. He can make that. Three by three by Andy Lack. That's Kennett turnovers leading to offense, whether it be twos or threes. Uh, Portisville's getting real sloppy with the basketball right now. That's three possessions in a row where they've uh, Coach Bide will uh, point to his temples there, wanting to know what they're thinking. He's not uh, happy with those three possessions. And again, they're going to have to take care of the ball, and that's been, that's been their that's pretty much been their Achilles' heel this uh, this season. Garman pulls up the three, won't go. Walls gets the rebound and fumbles it out of bounds. Jake, Jake Young will inbound it, get it over to Ray. Been hounded by Carruthers. Yeah. Call the foul on Carruthers. His first, team seventh. Isaac Ray will go to the line for a one and one. If they're going to impede the player it's you've just about got to call the foul uh, a little bit of check in here and there is usually let go but but uh, but you're right he, when he it definitely did changes impede the, the direction yeah. it's got to be called jack walls double he walked it's kind of the walk double dribble yeah, yeah it was either a walk something. or a double dribble <laughs> It was a violation. We can say that. Combination for sure. of two, right. Again, Kenneth handling the ball. Jimmy Gooden trying to go out behind the back. He probably shouldn't be doing that, but he ended up getting the foul call. Drawing the foul. Foul's going to be on Tevin Walker, his first. Only team fifth. Again, another turnover caused by the pressure of Kennett. Sando Menace back in the game for Portageville. Jay Shavers drives, puts it up. There's Jimmy Gooden with the rebound. He's fouled by, Men by uh, Treadwell. Jimmy Gooden's gotten two or three good rebounds. And he's probably, he's the best rebounder Kennett has. And he's a six feet, he's a six foot guy, but he's the best rebounder Kennett has. Walker getting an ear full from of instruction from Coach Bidewell there. Okay, this game is also being brought to you by A Plus Family Clinic, Loma A Turnage, FNT, 203 East 3rd Street, Portageville. That's A Plus Family Clinic. Good makes two, extends Kenneth's lead to seven. It's 6.20 left in the half. Treadwell's going to try to change that. He bulls his way wow. in and gets the roll. Fred's a good ball handler. That's that's pretty impressive. He yeah. yeah, he and he's handling the ball. There's another three by Lack. And wow. Can it? Our, our little junior point, our little junior shooting guards have four threes between them. 25-17, eight-point lead for Kennett, 545 left in the first half. Tevin Walk with the ball out front. Over to Ray. He's going to try to get it in Treadwell's hand. Tevin Walker for three, won't go. Jimmy Gooden with the rebound. Kennett's running. Brothers all the way. Whoa. Might have been a little too fancy on that one. 
All I can say is oh to that. Yeah. Uh, he went three directions on one place somehow. With the uh, Shavers, opposite little fumble. Hand. Shavers quick hands take it. But then there's Treadwell. Shavers. Shavers hurries it up the court. Between the legs. Look like Brothers was Brothers going to slow it down a little bit. People on the floor in that play, Terry. Shavers pumps. Back out the walls. Portersville's in a man-to-man. -man. Kennett runs a spread offense. It's a timeout by Coach Vaughn. They weren't getting any penetration, weren't getting any movement. We'll be back in a minute. I chose Three Rivers Community College because it's a great place to start. I'm taking the same freshman and sophomore classes as at a university, but at TRCC they cost a lot less and financial aid goes further. I love the individual attention. My teachers are great and classes are convenient. Learn more at www.trcc.edu or call 877-TRY-TRCC. Start here, start now at Three Rivers Community College. Learn more online at trcc.edu. Okay, here we are back in, in the uh, second quarter of the game between Kennett, and the semifinal game between Kennett and Portageville. Kennett's ahead 25-17. They've kind of taken over this quarter. Kennett has uh, 11 points to two only for uh, Portageville. Portageville led at the end of the first quarter. Jack Walls pull up, and he scores. That'll Stretch be Portageville's trouble in this game if, if they can't get buckets to fall they'll uh, get get to a place where they fall too far behind they have a hard time offensively um, a lot of times and um, Jake Young with a good power move in there picks up the foul Jack Walls foul on Walls he'll shoot one and one Just think about it Jake's big and strong enough to uh Make himself some room. This is the first. Walls with the rebound. Our Garmin. And Kenneth pushing it. Crothers for th three. Can't get it to go. Ten point lead for Kenneth with 356 left in the left in the half. Another foul by Crothers. That's be his second. He may go to the bench for a little while, getting his, picking up his second foul. You don't want to. You don't want uh, Crothers, who's your floor leader, to have three fouls in the first half. No, not you know with a with a ten point lead in the in the games, not necessarily in in a critical point. I I agree with that wholeheartedly. Let's not pick up the third, especially as active as he's got to be um, in, on the defensive end. And as deep as Kenneth's bench is. Exactly. There's. There's, he's playing 10. I mean, they, I think 10 have already been through the Shavers scoreboard the three. already. He won't get it to go, but he gets his own rebound. Long rebound. Gonna trying to spread the floor. Wallace with the drive, put it up. Can't get it to go. Tip by Walls. Good activity underneath. Walls Kenneth, is getting some rebounds in there. He, he's had getting his more rebounds than, many, than yeah. there were. Rantham far out. Can't get it to go. Another rebound. But Shavers can't get it to go. He's blocked, and he pulls it out. Run the offense. Trying to set up something. Portisville's going to sit back in that saggy man-to-man -man and, and make them Shoot it and earn it a little bit. And Kenneth shoot, they're going to get a little impatient. We'll pull out to set up the offense. Try to feed in the good and couldn't get it to him. He's making himself big, but the entry pass wasn't there. Turnover. Shot clock was running down. Terry needed to. I'm glad they don't have the shot clock in high school, but the way most of these games are, you don't need a shot clock. 
one not, interesting. Not southeast Missouri. <laughs> That's right. It's not usually an issue. No. 227 left in the half. Kennedy with the 10-point lead, 27-17. Portisville's only scored two points in this quarter. Kenneth's defense has caused the turnovers, and, and Kenneth's uh, actually controlled the boards in this quarter, which is completely uh, diametrically opposite what happened in the first quarter. There's another hands by Kenneth, the tip ball. Look at Wallace, Wallace run that down. Wallace yeah, runs it down, outrun, outran Treadwell for that one. Good hustle by Kenneth. Trying to set up the offense again. Run a lot of motions. Coach Vaughn hollering for patience. It's now Kenneth doesn't have either one of their uh, really good ball handlers out there, and that uh, the the Gorman Crothers are out there, but Jack. Jack Walls has been active on the boards. Draws the foul against Booker. He'll go up, go to the line for two. One interesting thing, Terry, uh, Coach Jim Bidwell's son, Aaron, is now on the uh, Kennett staff, um, coaching against Dad. Uh, of course, that's already happened earlier this year, but um, I keep waiting for Kennett to run side entry or 1-3-1 <laughs> one, one or – Mickey Mouse or something yeah, that yeah, um, I want to see him run Mickey Mouse. Used to Coach Bidewell hollering. Walls misses both free throws. Kenneth's Kenneth usually doesn't shoot free throws very well. They're a decent shooting team, but they don't shoot free throws well. Kenneth's back in the 2-3 zone. Just mixing things up a little bit. One minute left in the quarter. Kennett with a 10-point lead. Portersville being patient. Denzel Simmons in the game for Portersville. Lawless flashes out front. Can't get the steal. Treadwell with a fadeaway. Won't go. Tipped by Young. Jimmy Gooden with the rebound. Gooden's done a lot of good things on the boards this quarter. Certainly has. Underneath the Gooden, pump fake. Got it to go. And he's also scored five points in the quarter. Kenneth leads 29-17, 20 seconds to go in the quarter and a half. Jake Young with the play, can't get it to go. Tipped by Simmons, tipped by Wallace, out of bounds on Wallace. Eight seconds left, 29-17, be Portersville ball on the sideline. Portersville is going to have to... Um, find some offense they're good they're just not even getting any shots um, and you're certainly not going to score any if you don't shoot the ball no. any they're, show, they're showing no sense of urgency there's two seconds left and there's a bad shot excellent quarter for Kenneth that's one of the best quarters Kenneth's played this year I think they I agree they outscored uh, Portageville 14 to 2 in that quarter and lead 29-17 difference in the ball game right now and uh it just uh, uh especially considering that Carruthers spent a good part of that on the bench um says a lot about these substitutes okay with uh, score 29 17 the winner of this game gets the unenviable job of facing the Bernie Mules tomorrow night we'll be back in a minute
Okay, here we are back for the uh, to wrap up the first first half of this semifinal game here at the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament between Kennett and Portageville with Kennett ahead 29 to 17. Lloyd, what are your thoughts about the first half? Well, Terry, I would um, I'll handle the scoring on Portageville's second quarter. Um, that was two points. Um, obviously, you've got to get uh, some more shot attempts somehow. Um, and I we were just talking about it at break. They're they seemingly are doing what they need to. They're just not getting any shot attempts at all um, and resulting in a, in a net two points in the quarter. That's the difference in the game. That's why it's a 12-point game. And when, and when they're getting, uh, at least in the second quarter, when they're getting a shot attempt off, and they're getting, they weren't getting very many, they were just getting one shot attempt right. off, which is unlike the first quarter when they, were, when they were getting two or three attempts every time they went in, they were getting two or three shots at us because, they were just completely dominating the boards over Kenneth, but the second quarter, it's a completely different story, especially with Jimmy Good and Jack Walls getting a lot of good rebounds for Kenneth. Kenneth actually uh, controlled the boards pretty well that quarter, took care of the ball better, and uh, and shot well enough to to uh, all five jump up. nine of Jack Walls. All five uh, nine of Jack Walls. Well, Jimmy a, Good is the big man at six foot. He's a water bug in there, and. Uh, uh, just a, a really good second quarter um, all the way around. They got their defense keyed up, um, rebounded the ball, and they made the shots that they needed to and, and somehow took Portageville completely out of any offensive set. Um, now, Portageville wasn't even getting – they weren't getting into any any rhythm. They were mostly just uh, passing the ball around the perimeter. They weren't getting in any, any rhythm, weren't penetrating the ball weren't getting it on the post uh, where they where they have some advantage over Kennett because of their size. But uh, credit Kennett's defense, that That's storming right. defense, with uh, just wears down on your team. I mean, it, when you got ten guys coming at you, and I think we said it last night when you know when you go into the paint against Kennett, it's like going against one of those Indian gods that has eight arms. Uh, they are just all over you, and it just and it just wears you down. I've Hands and reaching and poking. The game even started out so typical of a Kennett played game so far. Um, you know, quickly batting the ball away out of bounds. Quickly gets re-entered. The same thing, and a um, little bit of foul trouble started to creep into the game, and then it uh, went away and was a complete non-issue for them. Uh, uh, our Boy Carruthers there ended up with two. They were able to bench him and ex absolutely actually extend the lead. So um, says a lot about uh, Kennett's second quarter. Yeah, Kennett, or, uh, Carruthers, us three, and Jack Walls all have two fouls. But, again, Kennett was going to play ten people, and uh, the foul problems didn't seem to affect Kennett at all. Uh, the only one with any foul trouble that's with only two is Rondres Booker for Portageville. Portageville will have the ball. They'll be going uh, left or right on your screen. Portageville's in the blue with the white trim. Kenneth's the home team in the white with the black and gold trim. Got an email in, Terry. Good luck, Bulldogs, from uh, Kiara Porter. Obvious um, Kenneth fan. Uh, don't forget to email us, sports at yhctv.com. Send them in. Tell them how good the uh, color and play-by-play -play is. Brothers driving the lane, knocked out of bounds by uh, Treadwell. Those guys cover some ground. That I mean, they just <laughs> there's well, just Carruthers, no. Brothers is like kind of like a whippet. I mean, he, uh, he's six one and long, and can move with the ball quickly. Portersville's back in their man to man. Garman drives the baseline, can't get it to go, but he draws the foul. Garmin just baited him in and drew that foul on him. Yeah, and when you get a, when you get to the baseline on the guy, there's two things going to happen. You're going you're going to make a layup or you're going to get fouled. He makes the first of the foul shots. It gives him seven points. Sends the Kennett lead to 30 to 27. Booker, who now has three fouls, goes to the bench, replaced by Tevin Walker. Garmin makes both. 14-point lead for Kenneth, biggest lead of the game. 
Treadwell being now on the ball walls. Walker tried to get it underneath. Crothers over in the corner to gets it behind walls. And I, I see Coach Bidwell's just coaching his pants off, and you can tell it's a young team, a rather inexperienced team. And um, hey, the, 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 these guys are in the semifinal of a Christmas tournament. That, that can only be really good things well, on, uh, when your roster is just full of juniors and sophomores and freshmen. Well, on that last trip down the floor, you know, Tevin Walker, a sophomore who uh, they'll start out playing JV this year. What he was trying to do was the right thing. He was trying right. to get an entry pass into Jay Young on the post and where they have the advantage and it just, you know, the pass was just a little bit too low and couldn't be handled, but he was trying to do the right thing. The difference being JV, that pass probably is completed and, J, yeah, and everybody's all points. good, so. And just like that, you can't cross over dribble in front Jake of a Young with a good move down the line. Good move by Jake. That's a good move. Very good move. Gets his first two of the game. Makes the uh, coach smile when the superintendent's son <laughs> scores. <laughs> Everything, everybody's happy. Garman drives, puts it up. Had a nice defensive <laughs> play by Menace. But Garman just muscled it up <laughs> over him. And Menace got his hand on the ball. Uh, good, clean defensive play, but Garman just muscled it up. Walls guarding Treadwell close. <laughs> Jake Young being guarded by Good. Get Walls off me, he's thinking. <laughs> Again, the, the pressure of Kennett. And uh, the pressure of Kennett and the inexperienced guards of Portageville. Isaac Ray, this is his first year of play varsity. Yep. Again, Tevin Walker is just up from the JV. But they're good, what they're, they're, Coach they're good. Biden was telling him it's inside, not passing it, you know, 28 foot around the perimeter. Foul on walls underneath. Looks like player control foul. That's going to be his third. He was pushing. He Portageville ball. Walls third foul, Kenneth's first of the of the half. For some reason Coach Vaughn won, didn't totally agree with that call. Have you ever had a coach totally agree with every call? No, going against absolutely it? Okay. not. <laughs> I like it best when they um, are absolutely not looking, have no idea what the play was, and That's react to right. what the kid tells them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Gooden underneath with the rebound. Wow, that's fast. Oh, Whoa. what an athletic play. <laughs> Kennett got the ball down in about two seconds. Good dish by, uh, by Garman over to Wallace for a layup, and Treadwell came from nowhere. He, he, he committed the foul, but he just smothered Wallace. Completely surprised me. I, I didn't see him coming, I, uh, nor could expect it. And Wallace sure didn't see something coming. One of our sponsors tonight is Butler Drugstore, 222 East Main Street of Portageville. Phone number 573-379-5469. Go see them for all your pharmacy, gift, and jewelry needs. Wallace makes the first, makes the second. He now has eight points in the game. Kenneth's up to a 16-point lead, 35-19 with 5-10 left in the third quarter. Treble gets it down underneath Young. Nice pass over to, to Walker. He loses it. There goes Ursary. Can't make the layup. Garman tried to knock it back, couldn't get it in. We've got bodies everywhere, Terry. <laughs> Good, Good move, move Jake. By Jake Put Young. that in. But there's Garman with the rebound. Now Shaver went down, came up living, but he's still limping. That's going to have to get him out. He, right he through took us. A, a really weird fall out here at half court um, and, and almost an injury. Well, that's when most injuries happen. Yeah, There's an awkward fall. And it's not necessarily the hard falls. It's the awkward ones. It's really J favoring that left leg. Jansen Darst in the game for the uh, 
Bulldogs for the first time. Again, he's the 5'10 sophomore. Started out the year with JV. Treadwell all the way to the, to the hole. Timeout, Kennett. I chose Three Rivers Community College because it's a great place to start. I'm taking the same freshman and sophomore classes as at a university, but at TRCC they cost a lot less and financial aid goes further. I love the individual attention. My teachers are great and classes are convenient. Learn more at www.trcc.edu or call 877-TRY-TRCC. Start here, start now at Three Rivers Community College. Learn more online at trcc.edu. By the way, Terry, as we come back, where did Garmin come from on that dunk attempt? Though? I don't know. I think he started out around the uh, around the Portageville free throw line. Uh, last time I had a beat on him, he was crossing half court. The next thing I know, he's trying to follow up dunk it. So, okay, neither team's thoroughly taking control over this uh, over this third court. There's a nice, really good backdoor from uh, Crothers to Lack. Black now has eight in the game. Black, Wallace, I, I tell Wa you. Wallace strips, Treadwell, Treadwell commits the foul. Good defense for Wallace. I mentioned that last night, but I bet you Coach Vaughn has some outstanding uh, practices and scrimmages. He, uh, You could even go the way of... Uh, your wrestling match, just <laughs> whoever has the best practice scrimmage on pre-game day gets to start. Grant the men for, for Jimmy Gooden. Jimmy Gooden's played a good game. Wallace hits the first and the second. He now has 10 in the game. 18 point Kennett lead. I think the first five minutes of this half is going to be very important to Portageville if they were going to get back in. And they haven't shown any signs of, of uh, doing that. They're a, uh, they're a team that uh, just does not need to get behind 18 uh, with no. a lack of offense all night long. There's Jake Young, another nice move down the, ho down the lane, but they can't get it to go. Rebound underneath by Andy Lack. Out to Wallace. Underneath Gustry can get it to go. High off the glass. That's, the, that's two for Dwight Ustry. And last night he was the leading scorer for Kenneth. That's his first two for the game. Kevin Walker with the rebound. Nice move. Can't get it to go. And Tip back by Fernando Menace. He now has six in the game. 18 point lead for Kenneth with three minutes left in the third quarter. Long flee by Black. That wasn't what the coach wanted. He wanted to work some offense. Treadwell being, being hounded by us three. Every time Treadwell has the ball, he's hounded by somebody, and usually to somebody. Treble gets by Ustry, stops, pops, can't get it to go. Rebound, big rebound by Adam Grantham. Out to Lack, down to Ustry, layup's good. Ball never touched the floor, Terry, from the uh, rebound, yeah. um, just like Coach likes it. Yeah, three passes, and that's three passes and a layup. 2-12 two, two left, Kenneth's with their biggest lead of 20. Turn around by Tevin Walker, it won't go. Foul on Lack underneath. Used a little bit of a push, getting some room. That will be his second. His second foul. Substitutions for, for Kennett. Looks like Shavers we've got about walls. Eight new players in, Terry. Dominique, I have no Dominique idea. Dominique Walker in for Portageville. Again, he's a freshman. Very athletic freshman. 
He's going to get a lot of good basketball school, and there's probably never uh, not a better place for him to Absolutely. be. Absolutely, he's a very athletic player, and when he really learn when he learns how to play basketball, I think he's he could be one of those special players. Chase Shavers pulls up from Coach Bidwell's had them before on the roster, brought them up here as freshmen, and uh, used them and spent the next three years on all tournament teams. Yeah. Fred Garman with two. Extends Kenneth's lead to 22 with a minute 37 left in the third quarter. Mendes out to Darst. It won't go. Rebound by Grantham. Good hands. Good hands underneath the blue ball. Ray Isaac poked that Ray. away. That's and oh, again, he runs it right in. The, equally good right hands. Right in the Jay Shavers. End. Jay Shavers just. Ties him completely up, and it's going to be an altern alternate possession to go to go back to Portageville. That's that's good hands on each end of the that's floor. <laughs> good stuff. Little. Turn around by Ray, can't get it to go. Grantham with the rebound. Kenneth's pretty well since the first quarter. Kenneth's pretty well dominated every er aspect of the game. They're rebounding. They're rebounding better, they're shooting better, they're, they're moving their offense, and of course their defense is, uh, has remained excellent. There's good defensive play by Menace. There's Dominic Walker, who tries it all the way, from, gets his first two. Man, for a freshman, that guy covered a lot of ground. He can cover a lot of ground. Garmer with it. Gonna have to call a charge there. Garmer a little bit out of control. Had a real good move to get uh, to be able to drive the lane to make the penetration. That's his third. Looks like Jack Walls is shaking up a little bit. Wallace comes in for Walls. Usry throws out. Gooden comes in. Then it drops back to a 2 3. 30 seconds left. They got a 20 point lead. We don't want to give up anything cheap right at the end of the right at the end of the quarter. And Wallace disrupts the pass. Gets it over to Darst. He can't get it to go. He gets his own rebound. A nice, nice little putback. Two points for Jansen Darst, his first two of the game. Four seconds left. Steal by Darst. He's going to put it up, and it's blocked by Shavers. Good recovery uh, by Shavers. Save good recovery by That's, Shavers, yeah. but the 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 last 30 seconds of the game was a good 30 seconds for Portersville. They make the shot, get back down, make a steal, and get at least get a shot off. At the end of the third quarter, it's Kennedy Indians 45, Portersville Bulldogs 26, 27 will be. There's some exciting news in the workplace. Cable is getting down to business. That's right. New Wave Communications expertise and state-of-the-art technologies for internet and phone are the perfect solution for your business. Our solutions are flexible, our service reliable, and our prices are just the sort of bottom line advantage your business is looking for. Call New Wave Communications today at 866-460-WAVE. Nice end to the third quarter for Portageville, Terry, you were uh, uh, speaking of uh, two, three good possessions in a row and uh, exactly what a young team needs to do, string two, three good possessions and, uh, y you know, get this game back to uh, hopefully a reasonable striking distance. And one, and one thing we'll see here in the fourth quarter, can it's ahead by 18. One thing that they have not been able to do very well this year is close out games. They weren't right. able to do it last night against Bluefield, even though they won the game. And they lost the game earlier this year against Earl, Arkansas, where they were ahead by 15 in the fourth quarter and lost by a six. We'll see how well Kenneth takes care of the ball and how well they, they manage the clock. Looks like Kenneth's content to control the ball. Brothers with a drive to the hole can't get it to go. Rebound by Menace. 7:30 left in the left in the game. 
We'll see if Treadwell can put him put him on his back like he did last night when he scored 15 points in the fourth. Shoots the three, it won't go. Three-point shot's hard to make whenever yeah. you've been beat up all game. When you've had somebody it's, in your face all game. It's, it's going to be uh, a, it a takes hard one for away. him to make especially. Just from the uh, uh, angle of him having to carry so much of it and rebound. And, and we saw the same thing in the game the other day with uh, John Smith. There's a three-pointer by Lack. It won't go. He gets his own rebound. Kenneth's, Kenneth's legs are fresher. Wallace with the drive to the hole, and he gets fouled. Kenneth, with all, with, with as deep as they go, their legs are fresher than Fort Israel. They're getting to all the, all the loose balls now. Foul on Jake Young. Wallace makes the first. Be sure to visit our sponsors, Ellington Insurance, 200 East Main Street in Portageville. Come go to see Ellington Insurance for all your insurance needs. Wallace makes the first. And the second. He's six for six from the line. 12 points in the game, 20 point Kennett, Kennett lead. Kennett's playing back to the two three zone, but it, it's not a passive zone as Schaefer gets in the in the lane. I don't think you can slow Shavers down. No, there's I think there's one speed. He has his his motor has one speed. And, a lot of, and, and a lot of not red bull in that guy. There he's all over Darst. Jake Young from the free throw line. Nice shot. A spot up 15 footer. Gets two three zone. That, that free throw line is you can get that spot up. Especially a for a big man. I'm a, yeah. a guy can kind of make a living there and get him out of that right. defense. Six minutes left in the game. Kennett with an 18, 18 point lead. Coach Bidwell's brought Dominic Walker back in the game, the freshman we were talking of. Great opportunity for him. Brothers trying to drive work against Menace. He makes the spin. They're going to call it on the floor. Foul against Menace. It's on the floor. Menace first foul. Fifth team foul. Jack Wall's back in the game for Grantham. Would say that uh, Coach Bible is going to play all play his young players, but that's all he's got. <laughs> Good but point. he is playing. He's playing a couple of the freshmen, and I can guarantee you, later in the year, Portageville is going to be a pretty good team. There's a blocking foul. Driver Wallace. He scores it. Fouls on Dominique Walker. Very uh, similar look to that play. Walker had the right idea again as a freshman. He's doing exactly what what he's expected and thinks is right. Just a um, probably bailed out a little too soon on that one. 15 for Wallace on the game as he makes the free throw. Kennett with the largest lead, 21 point lead. Portersville has only scored 14 points since the first quarter. Turn around by Walker, can't get it to go. Cruz will walk the ball up. Five minutes, five ten left in the game. Kenneth ahead by 21. Ball's out front being guarded by Jake Young over to Cruthers. Kenneth's going to run their offense. Cruthers drives the lane, floats it up, and gets it. That's only his fourth one of the game. Good looking shot, I mean, he, he makes it look easy. Kent's still pressuring. Deion Foster, another JV guy coming into the game. Also, Rondreas Booker. I say, he's, I say he's another JV guy, he's not a JV guy anymore. Right. He started out the year on the JV. There's a foul by Gooden and a, a call. A, 
reach in still. They call the foul. Good wanted to make sure he had the right guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Me? Yeah. <laughs> He's the only one with the white jersey out there. <laughs> Buckle inbound to Jake Young. Dominique Walker drives the lane, and he's going to be fouled by Wallace. It's Wallace's second. Team fifth. Fredwell and Jay Young, nice seal, nice, nice speed. Nice seal and finish. Good, good look to that whole play. Jay Young with the seal. Jack Wall back in the Jay Young, puts it up, block by Crothers off of uh, Kennett. 4-16 left in the game. Kennett still with the 21-point lead. That matches their, their biggest league of the night. Jake Young gets a strip. Jack Walls with Wallace. Foul's going to be on Dion Foster. It's a good foul to commit because otherwise there's going to be either uh, Walls or Wallace is going to have a layup. First, no good. Walls is fast. I mean, he's just fast. You can say that about a lot of the guys <laughs> on the Kenneth. They fly up and down the court. It's going to be an interesting matchup tomorrow it night. Is, because assuming Kenneth's going to hold on 21-point lead in the last Assuming minutes. they hold on, it's it's going to be a um, <laughs> uh, an interesting guard battle. Treadwell with a good move. Gets it underneath the walker. Can't get it to finish. Treadwell's will. And he can't get it to finish. Booker gets the rebound. Puts it back. Can't get it to go. He'll shoot two. He was fouled underneath. By Jimmy Gooden, his second. What helping bring you this game tonight is A Plus Family Kim Clinic in Portageville, 203 East Third Street in Portageville. It's Loma A. Turnage FMP. Visit A, Fa A Plus Family Clinic for your medical needs. Booker misses the first. Not that we want anyone sick, but if you are. But if you are. If you are, should you get sick? Or if you just want a checkup. <laughs> Just down the uh, street from the school. And when you get to be my age, they tell you to go in for checkups over <laughs> down there. And if you don't, even if you're feeling fine, then after you go in for the checkup, you don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you what's wrong with you. Jimmy Gooden handling the ball out front. Timeout, Kenneth. 322 left in the game. Kennett with the 20 point lead. Hey, I'm Kurt Hillis at Lincoln Lacey Chevrolet. We've got a full line of GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick products. I'll pass it over to my Ford man, Charlie Thacker. GM, not your thing? Come check us out here at the Ford Dodge Jeep store. Check out my man Blake on the internet, lincolnlacey.com. If you don't have time to come down to Malden, check us out on cars.com or allthetrader.com. And if you need financing, I'm going to pass it to my man, Robert Sanders. And our ultimate goal here at Lincoln Lacey, no matter your situation, is to pass the savings on to you. That uh, ad, I would like to uh, note that Kurt Hillis is initially throwing a bounce pass that is promptly caught as a chess pass. So <laughs> um, 
<laughs> you, you've seen that ad too many times then. <laughs> Quick timeout. Coach Vaughn wasn't liking the way things were developing at all. Full time. Full timeout. We'll be back in a minute. And this game is brought to you by New Wave Communications, Three Rivers Community College, Lincoln Lacey Motors, Butler Drugstore, A Plus Family Clinic. And Ellington Insurance and State Representative Terry Swinger. We haven't mentioned Terry Swinger's name enough tonight. He's a uh, good representative, represents uh, Pemiscott and South Dunklin County. And he's one of those guys that certainly met Will, Will Rogers because he's one of those guys that. Never, never meets somebody he doesn't like, and everybody who meets him automatically likes him. Good friend of the school system. I know he's on one of the uh, education committees. I've heard him talk about Representative Swinger and the uh, work that he does on their behalf. Fred Garman in the game, handling the point. Kenneth's going to keep running their offense. Three minutes, five seconds left. Kenneth with a 20-point lead. And Kenneth's hanging on to the ball. Kenneth's handling the uh, their lead a lot better than they than they have previously this year. Cards have been guarded by Dominic Walker. Good and over in the corner. Wallace pulls it out. Kenneth's working. Kenneth's working on on late game situations right now. Very. Very good block shot Very there. good block by Treadwell. <laughs> That's two this game that he's. Coach Bidewell is, is screaming for his players to push that ball to the sideline. He's just working overtime, uh, still teaching, still going, 20 points down, two minutes to go. Well, uh, it's a long season. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, Coach Bidewell knows it's that this, uh, this is an early season tournament. I remember a couple of years ago he had a team that looked a lot like this. And uh, I was doing one of these games, and, and I mentioned something. I said, well, uh, by the end of the season, they'll get their 15 wins or so. Yep. Uh, and whoever was doing it with me said, well, not with this team. He, if he gets it with this team, he'll be the coach of the year. Well, he ended up winning 17 that year and having a good solid season. This team will win their 15, 17 games. They're not going to be a state champion this year. Uh, it, it's hard to be state champion every year, but they're not going to. But uh, they're full of juniors, they're full of sophomores, they have freshmen, and they're all, by the end of this year, they'll be a, they'll be a pretty good team by the end of the year. Rebuilding them with the uh, tools they've got, that's a, that's a pretty good cast to rebuild with. I'll, I like their chances, and um, again, I, I'm seeing. They've got, they've got some materials out some, there. Some jerseys out there that I'm pretty sure over the course of the next couple of years we're going to see pretty involved late in the tournament up here anyway. Well, there's some material to work with out there. Foul out front on uh, Treadwell, guarded Crothers. Be his fourth. Crothers go the line, shoot one and one. Crothers only four points in the game, but played her as usual excellent floor game. Think, uh, nice first. Coach Bidewell making a point that Coach Vaughn might have been in on that trap somehow. Be sure to let us know how you like the getting these games live on uh, YHD TV. I, this is a this is a uh, new experience for us. Uh, we're enjoying doing it. The feedback has been excellent. And I think it's good for high school basketball and high school basketball fans to have this uh, have this exposure and those and, it, and it's really great for the players. They they're on live TV. Denzel Simmons go to the line, shoot two. He's fouled by Crothers. Misses the first. Lack and good in the game for Kenneth, placing Walls and Usry. They go to the they go uh, to a good ovation from the Kenneth fans that traveled up here. 
Simmons makes the second. He now has three in the game. 21 point lead again for Kennett. It's been several years, Terry, since Kennett's been in a Christmas tournament final. Uh, we'll look it up here, but it's been many years since they've been here. And he's got the team to do it this year. I, uh, seeds aside, I think immediately um, knew that Kennett was definitely going to be a player in this tournament and um, be a be a definitely one of the top three teams in it anyway. Yeah, it looks like 1991 was the last time Kennett was in the finals. Feed underneath, Andy Lack with two. Gives him 10 for the game, he's in double figures. 91, was that against Malden maybe? Seemed like Twin Malden. Rivers, Twin Rivers uh, defeated Kennett 59-48 right. that That's year. That's right, yep. Last time Kennett won this tournament was in 1978 when they defeated Papa Bluff. After really? It seems like Papa Bluff and Sykeson were playing in the tournament. I wouldn't have thought it had been that long for them. I'm trying to think of the last time Kennett was even in the semifinals. It's been it's been several years. They've had some good, Kennett's had some good teams, but they've, uh, it's been a while since they've even made the sem semifinals. 106, 105 left in the game. Kenneth's going to protect the ball. Again, both teams still playing. They're still playing fundamental basketball. Gar Garmin to get, uh, gets by Walker. Scores two. He now has 14 in the game. Treble for three. Count it. Glad he made that. Fred said to uh, uh, work awful hard tonight and had a lot of guys running at him. Fred Treadwell's a good basketball he player. Is. He comes out. He's he's still want, he's still playing hard. There's 25 seconds left. They're down by 22, and they're chasing Kennett all over the court. They're not get, They're still playing basketball, and I like to see that. 23 and a half seconds left. Timeout. But Kennett uh, they Kennett leads 58-36. Again, let's uh, give you the sponsors of tonight's game. These are the people these people are making it possible for uh, you to be able to watch this game both on Channel 21 of New Wave Communications and on the internet at YHC TV. It's Le the Three Rivers Community College, Lincoln Lacey Motors in Malden, New Wave Communications, Butler Drugstore in Portageville, Ellington Insurance in Portageville, A Plus Family Cl Clinic, and Representative Terry Swinger. Thank all the sponsors. If I remember right, Terry, uh, Portageville's first year in this tournament back in the early 90s, I believe they slipped right through to the finals almost immediately. I think that was um, might have been one of those undefeated years. Yeah. Bad but year to invite uh, Portageville to right. your invitational. <laughs> But, you know, Portageville's <laughs> had more success in the state tournament than they've had in this you tournament. You know they have, and, and, and they're – that's a tribute to them and getting better all year long. This is this is definitely a tune up for them and not a uh, not a deal they get too uh, too worried about season speaking. Okay, there's the final buzzer. The final score is Kennett 58. Very impressive vic victory over Forageville at 36. We'll be back in a minute with the wrap up of the game.
Okay, we're back here for the wrap-up of the uh, second semifinal game of the Bloomfield Tournament. The Kennet Indians uh, handily defeated the Portageville Bulldogs 58-36. to 36. Tomorrow night, Kennet will play Bernie for the championship of this of the tournament. Bernie's the number one seed, Kennet's the number three seed, and it's going to be, a, I promise to be a very good game. The scoring tonight for the Portageville Bulldogs, Fred Treadwell, uh, who has who's pretty well has to put everything on his back for Portageville and was doing it tonight, scored 12, led them. Fernando Menace with six. Jake Young with six. Five for Rondeus Booker. Three for Denzel Simmons. Two for Dar no. Jansen Darst. And two for Isaac Ray for their 36 points. He'll get but it when he gets home, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Portageville only had 21 points in the final three quarters. They scored 15 in the first quarter. Uh, actually led after one quarter, but then Kenneth just uh, turned the game completely around and dominated. That's after not going that. to be enough in most high school games, much less against uh, that cat quick Kenneth bunch. No. Uh, Kenneth was led by Cameron Wallace with 15, Fred Garman 14, 10 for Andy Lack, 7 for Jimmy Gooden, 6 for Andre Truthers. Four Dwight Ustry and two for Jack Wallace. Kennett always has a different seems to have a different guy leading the team. Uh, the last couple of games, Wallace and Lax didn't score very much. Tonight they're scoring 15 and 10. Uh, Ustry was leading scorer last night. He just scores four. Uh, Crothers, who has uh, tremendous offensive skills, just scores six for the second sec second consecutive night. But then Kennett uh, rolls to a 22 point victory. The frustrating thing about a team like Kennett is who do you pick for the all-tournament team, Terry? We're going to have to uh, I don't know. kind of roll the dice out there and see because um, very deserving. Can't imagine them spreading it any uh, more thin than they do. Everyone's involved. Uh, when Lack comes in, he's automatically one of the biggest threats on the floor. Wallace starts that away, um, and that doesn't even um, – Garmin probably to me has showed out all week – long the most and the most visible he but had. they're just getting it from all angles yeah they they they've run so many people in that and and this one of the good things about this Kennett team and this is uh, uh something Kennett ha doesn't always get there's really no selfish players on the team uh, you can watch how they play there's nobody who's always looking for their shot there's nobody on that team that thinks well i need to get my 15 my 12 to 15 points, and then we'll worry about winning the game. Right. Nobody has that attitude on the Kennett team, and that's going to uh, that's going to fare well for them for the rest of this year. Now tomorrow night, they got a challenge. <laughs> well, it, it's it's uh, it's going to be a typical Christmas tournament finals. The stars kind of have to come out. The the good players have to step up. You got to get production from all angles. Um, everyone's going to have to. I can't. I can't wait. It's going to be very guard oriented. It's going to be up and down the floor, just like uh, just like we want a Christmas tournament final to be. Kenneth's going to have to somehow figure out how to get on the boards against Murray. And that's going to be a that's big chore because Murray's be big and their and their big men are very active. Uh, if they can, Kenneth has depth. They have. They go deeper than Bernie. If they can get into Bernie's bench. That will, get, that will help Kennett a lot. One of the big things, even things are all even, one of the big things that uh, really is advantage Bernie besides their talent is that everybody on the Bernie team's been there before. That's right. They're very experienced in big games. They know how to win big games. And uh, that being, that's an intangible uh, that is a very big intangible and a very big advantage well, for I think Bernie. Coach Botch, his kids love to play here. They catch it at Christmas. They catch it at the conference tournament, and um, it's it's kind of a, a second home, if you will, for them. And uh, they're they're gonna they're gonna come out and have a lot of fun tomorrow night, as well as I hope we all do and should. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for uh, tonight's game. Now tomorrow night's lineup is gonna start at three o'clock. Uh, the first game is a uh, consolation championship between Donovan and South Penn. Then at uh, 4:30, we're going to Richland and Haytai will play for fifth place. No, Third, Richland and Bloomfield. Richland and Bloomfield. I'm sorry, Bloomfield handles Haytai very. Bloomfield guy is going to catch me on that <laughs> one, aren't you? <laughs> well, Bloomfield's needing that uh, yeah. rematch. Richland beat them, beat them a couple right. weeks ago, and and, uh, and that's they're looking and kind uh, of lower Haytai's seat. That's right. 
Uh, the third place game will be Portageville versus Dexter. That could be a good game. And then Bernie versus Kennedy at 7.30 tomorrow night. That's going to wrap it up here tonight for our producer, Greg Schwartz, our camera person, Brenda Horton and Haley Stockton. For Lloyd Rice, this is Terry McVeigh. Thank you for watching the Kenneth Bloomfield tur uh, Christmas Tournament on YHC-TV.